That was absolutely crushed. What was that attack? Let's look at the army comp again. Five lightning, two quakes, and six freezes. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Clash with Eric. Guys, it's the semifinals of the Clash Champs Cup. We have Method to Madness versus Unicorns of Love going in for a best of two today. Let's kick it off here with Beige starting off against Sahara. Guys, make sure that like button, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to use code Eric. And uh, as soon as the attack is done, I got something special for you because we're going to start doing some base giveaways from the pros. And I'm going to talk to you about it for just a minute. So here we go. Beige coming in with a queen charge into hybrid. Starting off with the early queen ability to get the king down. Rather than doing a rage and a headhunter, decided to go with the ability there and just... Uh, Pop it nice and early. He's going to go right into this multi-inferno. Get the Eagle Artillery down. He's got a Wizard and a Hog working on the side. Get that Mortar down, but a Tesla pops on him. Doesn't get it. Two Tesla's pop on him. Drops in his Siege Barracks. Drops in his King before the Siege Barracks to tank all the defenses. But looks like... I think the King's uh, taking all the damage there. I don't think the... Yeah, the Siege Barracks is not taking any of the damage. So that's perfect. The Queen doing a pretty good job there of staying away from that single inferno for now but she's not going to stay away from it for much longer she can reach it she does break off to the middle and he has a wall break that has opened that area up and is going to allow him direct access into the multi inferno in the core of the base there and that will make so all the miners are going to shoot directly into the enemy royal champion his royal champion on the other hand is stuck onto a lava hound and she's going to be beating some hounds down for quite a while Freezes up the scatter shot as the hogs are making their approach to it. They're inside of the minimum range of it, but the ones that do make it to it get sprung. The miners are splitting off ahead there. So there are some that are going to try to go to it, but most of them split off to the skelly trap. There's a freeze for the other scatter shot. The healers have switched over to the miners. That is going to work out really, really nice for him here. But the rage is kind of going to waste here. His queen will grab out that archer tower and she's going to go down. He still has a road champion ability. He still has to get through a single inferno though. And he has the healers have now switched over to a P.E.K.K.A. And now the wizards as they're sticking in the back. He does get inside the mem range with the scatter shot. He's going to take it down. And Beige is still looking good here as he has uh, just over or just under a minute. I mean. A wizard work on the backside, working on the cleanup. The Royal Champion now getting targeted by the single inferno. She's gonna drop, but not before dropping the expo first. The miners inside of the minimum range. The healers have switched back over, and he's got the triple on the board here. Beige getting it done here for the first attack of the Clash Champs Cup playoffs in the semifinals. Easy triple on the board, guys. Free basis. So from this day onward, every month, we're going to be giving away Town Hall 9 through Town Hall 13 bases, exclusive for YouTube members only, and also uh, Twitch subscribers. We can't forget about them. So what I need you to do is in the community tab right here on YouTube, after you press that join button, then you get a uh, base for your Town Hall level built from the pros every single month from blueprint base building we have all the best builders in the world here all the pro players and uh you can get custom bases uh you can also order your own custom bases from blueprintcoc.com i'll put a link for that in the video description and in the pinned comments you can go check it out all right here we go curry is live here we go curry coming in with an inferno dragon attack for the second attack of the war, starting with the baby dragon swarm up in the top corner, charging the town hall directly with an electric dragon up there. And his queen actually going to get funneled to go inside of the base here, potentially. And she doesn't. <laughs> of course she doesn't. Oh, queen. Why will she never take those open walls? But that's all right. The uh, nice, nice freeze placement right there. OP freeze placement right there. Made a little mistake there, but we'll see if we can recover from it. He's got three more skeleton spells. And one more freeze to carry him through the base. 
A lot of the Inferno Dragons have broken the trash on the outside as the e Drag has gone to the inside, but he does get the enemy Road Champion Gage. He's got the Scatter Shot also locked up there from the Skeleton Spells. He's got the other Free Spell to lock down the other Scatter Shot. His Queen does survive up to this point, and she's got the King there tanking for her for now. She'll help get that Arch Tower down. He just needs to get through the last air defense. The RC has started her way in with the king and she can sweep in and easily take out the rest of the base he's got the last skelly spell down but it's not doing anything doesn't even need it it's absolutely crushed and unicorns of love with attack number two for the triple let's go we're live once again here we go coffee that's what i need coffee coming in against curry that's also what i need <laughs> it's coffee and curry that's Maybe that's not the best mix, but we'll see if these two can give us a triple right now. Or maybe Curry doesn't want to give it up. Maybe maybe that's why he's trying not to mix. But he's going to go in here with a Warden Walk to start off the funnel. Catches a Tessa there in the process, and he'll get a jump spell with the King coming at the Town Hall. He's going to try to maybe funnel the King in with the P.E.K.K.A. and a Giant that came down. The Giant just there to make sure the Siege Burks doesn't take any damage, but the King is going to step into the Town Hall. If he can take out that Bomb Tower before he pops his ability, then he's going to be able to... Oh, and he got Skelly Traps there as well. If he can take all those down before he pops his ability, he can distract all the Beams of the Inferno, protecting the, the Wizards that are all around in the area there. He's got the P.E.K.K.A. work on the outside. It's going to go into the scatter shot there. The King pops his ability, protecting everything. It's a super bridge to start the way in. They're going to work their way through the Hound. And with all of them working on the Hound together while they continuously spawn big boys, they continue to walk out in front there and beat down the next defenses up ahead. He's going to be in a really strong position here. The King does get the Town Hall down. The Yetis that come out of the Siege Barracks do ultimately step up, and they're going to work on the scatter shot. He did lose all the Wizards on the outside, though. And that could potentially be a problem here as he continues to move forward. But he has the jump down. And in fact, he brought three jumps into this attack. And that's going to open up all the way to the backside multi-infernos. He's got the first inferno finally engaged there. But they do get distracted, pulled off onto the road champion for this moment. And all the other troops had veered down to the bottom side and are starting to work out of the base there. The road champion going invisible as she works her way through. But that is going to work all the witches back into the base here and hopefully rejoin with the healers. He's got a queen ability. He can protect her and the road champion saves the queen and gets some of the damage off of her. She continues to work her way through. All the big boys work on the outside with the wizard and he'll work his way to this multi for another. There's not a lot of defenses left, but that Grand Warden statue hits really, really hard and the witch does not go down before the Grand Warden statue does. Last invisibility spell for the road champion and she's on her way to a three-star. All defenses are almost tanked there except for the cannon. She might be able to power through it, but she's got 30 seconds to carry through. There's a giant bomb. The Warden tries to take a shot at it. Wizards are collapsing in and Coffee has got the triple on the border. There, ladies and gentlemen, that is another triple. We are flawless so far this war. These teams are not letting up. They want to make it into the grand finals. All right, guys, Sahara coming in against Beige on the next one here. We got a another Inferno Dragon attack. This attack has become increasingly popular and it is effectively strong or su super effective, I mean, against... The bases that have the air defense are spread wide to the outside. Now, these bases are built to stop Lalo by making so there aren't good centralized anchor points for Lava Hounds. But when we see the air defense is wide to the outside, as they get weaker to Lalo, you get stronger for this attack. So, we'll see how we can do here as he starts his way in with the Electric Dragon up in the top corner. The heroes down in the bottom corner. The heroes are going to immediately grab out an air defense and engage the enemy king. You'll pop an early ward ability, which will get him through the multi-inferno and the scatter shot. And the enemy queen rages up as he fights the queen. And there we go into the core of the base here. Freeze up the ground expo, it looks like. To what is that? What was that for? Why did he freeze up the ground expo? Not entirely sure. Maybe it's to save uh, some uh, health on his heroes here. Pop his king ability. That'll take out the other ground expo and charge his way to the single inferno. Now, the king ability is really smart there with the uh, single inferno because it is going to allow a whole bunch of small barbarians to provide tanking as the inferno dragons work their way into that air defense and single inferno. They're on to it. The world champion joining them. The blimp crosses through onto the town hall, but it hits a tornado trap. More inferno dragons step up. They're going to take it down, and it almost doesn't go down, but he's got plenty of inferno dragons in in the area is on the lasting inferno it goes down as well rc sweeping around last skeleton spells are starting to drop he's got an rc ability he's got a queen ability and he's got plenty 
of Inferno Dragons to clean up the rest of the base. Last Skeletal Spell comes down onto the cannon. They finish it before the RC can get over there. And it is another super fast triple here from Unicorns of Love. And neither of these teams are letting up. They both want it. They both want to go to the Grand Finals. And they're going to fight tooth and nail to get there. Let's keep it rolling. We have Unicorns of Love versus Method of Madness on this side. And... On the other side, obviously, we have MCS versus Civilian Esports, who had some really, really tough paths getting through, especially MCS. Like, they had to go through... Like, look at this... Look at this powerhouse of a bracket they had to fight through to get here. MCS, their path to get here was through Tribe Gaming, Eleven Original, and the Queen Walkers. And in that same bracket was Alternate Attacks and Vitang and RTK. That was a crazy, crazy bracket right there. But they fought their way through and they have arrived in the semifinals. But let's see if they can continue this and go all the way to the grand finals. Coming in next, we have Love. From Method to Madness. Coming in with a Sui Lalo. Got one Quake. And a little bit of lighting that's already been used. Looks like it hit that multi-inferno. He's going to try to push this RC in. And wow! Gets that multi-inferno off of the chain's map. That's like one of these, uh, one of the things that I've actually started to get in the habit of is the first thing I start looking at in a base, if it's not immediately viable for like a, a super witch attack or something like that and something simple, I start looking for royal champion chains that go into more critical defense like that. And it's been a very, very effective way to set up my attacks here. And it's uh, very strong. I'm definitely, uh, there's definitely a lot to learn from these players. And uh, you could definitely start to watch for the same things they're looking for that they set up these attacks with. And you can make these attacks your own with little practice. It's like the queen. Getting away from that lava hound as the king stepped in there took the town hall and the queen is actually going to Go down deeper in the base there and she will engage the lava hound. There's still no damage in that area right there But look at the half crescent that is around this base right now That is all that's left for these defenses There is this multi inferno over in the left side that could potentially present a problem the queen Popping the hound there, but the poison comes down perfectly, catches all of the pups, and the queen will survive and get another shot onto the enemy queen. Let's one or two. No, she still has her ability. Just kidding. I didn't realize she had her ability. The enemy queen goes down. Here comes the hounds crossing across the base there. One of them pops on the way. The other one arriving right as he goes into the multi-inferno. Unfortunately, loses most of the pups there, so a lot of his cleanup is lost there, but he'll freeze up the multi-inferno. He'll work his way into the air defense and the multi. Pops the ward ability as he goes into the core of the base there. Those balloons hopefully path into the multi-inferno. They do, and while the stone of the ward ability, Trigger, or tr Trigger, they trigger all the red bombs in the middle of the base as the slammer picks up the slack there, works his way into the scatter shot, and this is looking good here. World top Korea player love playing now out of method of madness after they get signed as a pro team and they are looking good here they are looking strong and they are perfect so far this war three out of three triples and they're yet to miss one but then again so is unicorns level we'll see if they can answer back here and keep this triple train rolling let's go toto is live here we go toto coming in with a queen charge lalo our first queen charge of the war but why on earth would he bring three earthquakes? What does he do with three earthquakes here? He quakes out with three earthquakes, both of these multi-infernos. The queen is going to clear the way on one of them, but what is he trying to do here? He makes the cannon invisible. Wow, that is a smart way to do that. Rather than throwing one lightning onto each. And then the earthquake, he just makes it invisible. The queen goes the wrong way, though. That's a problem. Um, I do like the RC move there. That was really, really clever there. To do three earthquakes instead of doing a lightning and earthquake on each of them. I guess he still could have done a lightning and an earthquake on each of them. But it does about the same, I guess. I don't know if there's a huge advantage of doing it that way compared to the other way. If they're both reachable by the earthquake, but... We'll see if he actually gets a wall weaken up here for the queen to attack later on. He'll have to go to ability as the queen is kind of causing him problems here. He'll step in and get the enemy queen. 
And does he... Oh, he goes inside of the scatter scout compartment. All right. He can work with this. It's backwards from what he planned, but it's actually going to work out better, potentially, because he'll be able to Lalo into the Eagle Artillery earlier into the attack and work his way over to the Town Hall. If the King's clearing all the trash on the outside, then once the Lalo sweeps through, then the Queen really has nowhere to go, but she has a wall break that sends her into the core of the base, and she can get the Royal Champion from there. The King is keeping the Lava Hound off of her. A wizard comes down to help get that air defense down so it doesn't target the healers and hopefully pushes the queen towards the core of the base there. The king's stepping all the way in and he might be able to get the eagle artillery down before he goes down. Here comes the soul sever. I don't know that this is the way that the queen was originally tended to go, but it's working out really, really nice for him. Toto is looking strong here as he pushes into the single front of the bottom of the base here, working his way towards the town hall. He's got two phrases to lock it up. The queen finally goes down, but the healers transfer over to the king and the king is still hanging in there and he'll continue to tank the hound there and he'll work his way towards the town hall he's got the uh warden luckily not getting distracted onto the king and following him instead of going to the town hall and he does step up he gets the protection from the town hall and he has a haste to carry him through to the last in or uh, scatter shot there this is looking absolutely crushed he has more balloons and cleanup that he has not deployed yet the hound finally pops in the back row there his heel is died off but the king did more than enough work here. That king was OP in this attack here. And even though the queen looked like she went the wrong way, it didn't slow him down at all. He opens up the stone slammer, drops out an inferno dragon, and he'll work his way into the final cleanup. There we go. 13 seconds to go, but he's got a couple of pups here that might slow down a little bit. But this sneaky goblin needs to turn back. Go back. No, 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 no. Go. No. Yes. No. Go. All the way. Oh, the warden sniped it at the last second. The warden, OP, catches it on the buzzer. <sighs> oh, jeez. I thought he was in a time fail, but the warden, the warden takes the shot. What a sniper. Sniper warden for the win. Let's go. We're live on the other side here, guys. Lons. As both teams are still perfect, zaps out the air sweeper to start this one off here. Coming in with more Inferno Dragons. And start his king in on one side. The king might be able to get funneled in to go. No, he doesn't really have anything to form a funnel there. But the ice golem will pop, and maybe the king will pop in there and grab that air defense down. Otherwise, the queen could join up with him as he uh, kind of gets around the corner a little bit there. And if the king could go in there and get that eagle artillery, that'd be huge. He might. Depends on how fast that queen takes the storage down. Wow, the queen gets it down in time. That was perfect timing there. Really, really uh, strong start here. So the king will step over and get the eagle artillery down. And that will further force all the dragons to stay together as they work their way in. They're going to work their way into that warden statue. And a big Tessa farm pops over by the town hall. The E-Drag is working on it as the balloons that came out of the stone, or the blimp, I mean, do tank a lot of those defenses. While the E-Drag is working, it is going to get down the entire Tessa farm. OP E-Drag over there as the king continues to take the scatter shot down to the bottom side. The queen of the king and the road champion all working for that bottom corner now, and he'll work his way to the core of the base. He's got a freeze for the enemy queen. He's got skeleton spells down on her as well. He has two more freezes, and he's going to need both of those to get to the single inferno ground expo and air defense on the back side of the base. There it is. Decides not to get the uh, ground expo. We can on the next one if he wants to, but the Inferno Dragon's got it under control there. There's another freeze to get the air defense down, and another base is absolutely crushed by the Inferno Dragons. This attack is so crazy. I can't believe how many times we've seen this attack so far, but what a crazy, crazy attack this is. And you really got to pay attention to that uh, lightning on the sweeper. Taking out the sweepers in this attack is vital to a success a lot of times there. If the fur dragons are getting knocked back, they reset their beam constantly and it makes them very difficult to move through. But look at this method to madness. Four out of four triples. And they're going to keep the pressure on continuously onto this Unicorns Love team. And uh, we'll go into attack number four. Komakun is live. Coming in with Giants, Quad Quake, wait, not Quad Quake, not Quad Quake, he just drops in a couple of Quakes, just to make sure the Log Launcher will quickly open up those walls, 
and he has six freezes for this attack guys six freezes no poisons and the log launcher gonna take out the scatter shot here before he ever gets targeted by it the log launcher also gonna damage up the town hall open up all the walls here there's the ward ability right as soon as the log launcher was potentially getting targeted by the royal champion he's got the multi inferno engage on the right side and with five more freezes he should be able to continue to power through the log launcher Almost gets the single inferno down on the opposite side of the town hall. He'll make quick work of that once he gets there. Yetis and giants will reach the town hall first. The witches are moving too slow to be able to step into the blast, so they would dodge it. Queen doesn't get hit either. And wow, look how fast this base is going down. He's completely leveling. He drops in one more freeze for the Royal Champion, and she does go down over there, but not before taking out one more building. He's got the freezes for the multi inferno that she can actually reach with the Queen over the walls there. He just needs his Queen to step out there before he loses too many. He pops the Queen ability early to save the Witches on the outside, and they are saved. The King stepping through, grabbing out the tank for the last little bit of splash damage there, and there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That was absolutely crushed. What was that attack? That was six. Let's look at the army comp again. That was six freezes. Three quakes or two quakes? It was, oh, there was some lightning in the mix there, too. Hold on. I want to rewatch that opening. What the heck did he just do? Is that our thumbnail? I think that's our thumbnail right there, guys. Five lightning. Two quakes. And six freezes. He must have zapped out this scatter shot and the expo, I guess. Yeah, there we go. And then he just he just zaps out one of the exp or one of the scatter shots. And then he charges the other one to get the log launcher to hit the town hall and the inferno. Just chooses a line that it can easily get to the town hall. Now this attack is going to work best against bases that have a more centralized air defense or not air defense, not town hall. That's very very cool. LG. Going in to make the first war perfect. But remember, guys, this is a best of two. So the scores from the first war will add to the scores of the second war. So even if both teams go perfect here or one team doesn't, that doesn't mean the war is over. There's still tons of war left to play. We're approaching the halfway point of the war where they'll reset, set new bases, and then go into the second war of the series here. Starting in with a wake to hit out that entire or the base there uh, didn't really hit that much I guess he got the eagle artillery though. He got the eagle got the expo and he got the He got the wizard tower there, but most importantly he got the eagle artillery. I think I don't know depends on what he does here He definitely wanted the single inferno so his RC could pop her ability and take it down, right? Seems to make sense not a lot of damage there. He drops in one more lightning. Takes out the headhunters. They were in the CC. That saves him his poison and makes so we can wait for the hound to pop. The last attack there from Method to Madness or Unicorns of Love, I mean, is in. We'll bounce over that in just a moment here. And we'll see what they are doing. We'll uh, reset the timer back to zero for them and uh, do the attack fresh from the start. But he's got a Yeti that came out of the Siege Barracks. That's doing a nice job there. RC going all the way to the core of the base there with the Queen. Wow, they're getting a lot into that core. Can he pop? Can he get the queen down? Oh my god, that'd be huge. <laughs> oh, baby, let's go. LG looking good to start it off here. He's got a hound that's crossing through. Grabs a lot of the black mines. Freezes up the town hall to preserve the balloons. And there's his haste. The warden is not going to get distracted. He's going to step right up there into the town hall. And if you catch all the blues there, that'd be perfect. All but two, but those two are okay they're okay they survive it more hounds into the other scatter shot hounds are popping there's an ice hound and a lava hound the lava hound has already popped there the ice hound will freeze up this uh scatter shot there unless the balloons get to it first finally pops nothing splits off to them more to those so they're gonna have to go back for it actually look at the pups they got it they got it they got it wow this is crushed <laughs> oh baby crazy war guys perfect war put up by method of madness <sighs> okay now we need to go check out the last one swag freeze in the middle and what a crazy performance here from both teams 
But we'll let the other one resolve there. And we'll go see what happened. Ready? Ladies and gentlemen. Unicorns of love. Is live. Well. Fake live. Because I just have a cover up for the time. But that's alright. We're going to dive in here and see what Wado did. Now guys. This determines. The first war. And sets us up for war number two. Oh, here we go. Snipes off the town hall with a Yeti. Yeti blimp there. Gets a CC pull out of it. Looks like he got a full full pull. He's got a bunch of headhunters that came out. He'll drive them off to the corner. Then the king comes down. He's got the ice golem there as well. Got a super minion that's not engaged yet. Wizard forming the funnel while the king is tanking. And work his way into the single inferno here. He's got the ice golem that froze up and popped it. Or froze, popped and froze it up. I mean, I said that backwards. Sends in. Hmm. Okay. Got the enemy road champion down. I heard his road champion come down. She's going to come in the opposite side of the town hall. Work her way to the scatter shot. He's got an invisibility spell to protect her. Keep her alive there. Get that scatter shot down. There's another invisibility. Protect her as long as possible. As Queen pops her ability. Takes down an expo. Get the wizard tower down. Okay, looking good, looking good. Strong start here. RC gets the tornado trap out of the way early on in the attack there. She wasn't getting much anymore anyways. That's okay. Get his way into the multi-inferno here nice and early. This is for the war, guys. This is for the war. There, multi-inferno goes down. Inferno goes down. He freezes up the sweeper. Here comes headhunters to charge into the queen. They arrive right at the perfect time there. Ward ability protects them. And he'll take some eagle strikes there. Actually, the eagle strikes get missed completely. And he gets into the core of the base there. He's got a, a weird split on his blues here, though. They should regroup here and go into the scatter shot. But no, they're missing the haste. That could be a potential problem here. The hound is in the mix as well. He's going to have to go back for the wizard tower. Circle him back around. He does make it to the scatter shot, though. Hound is tanking everything. They're going back over that direction. They're going to have to end on the wizard tower. But the hound will tank everything. It's looking good. Wait, though. No. But time. Time could be a potential factor here. Because this is going to raise their average attack time a bit. It won't make a big difference in the overall scheme of the war here. If he gets a high time. If uh, I don't expect them to go perfect for two full wars in a row. Well, let's see if he can make it through. I mean, he's got he's got plenty of time, guys. This looks crushed. He would love for that hound to pop. But guys, it's looking like a double perfect war. Unicorns of love versus method to madness. And there we go. Final building. Five, four, three, two, one. What? <laughs> It's a time fail! 99%! And Unicorns of Love loses the first match there! Crazy, crazy, crazy! <laughs> Guys! Nine triples followed by a 99% time fail. Wild! <laughs> I told you at some point somebody was going to fall just a little bit short there But we're already spun the next war so we're gonna get ready and we'll dive into the first attack Magic YouTube magic and cut and attack is playing now boom. All right guys It's time for war number two to kick off here now Remember that the war scores from the first war will carry forward into this one So method of madness coming in with that 15 star war will start this war with 15 stars on the board and Unicorns of love will come in with 1% off of that 15 stars there after their time fail at the end of the first match. So let's dive in here with Chichen. Starting us off here with some Inferno Dragons. E-Drag up in the top corner and going to start it off with a fast attack here. Skeletal Spells coming down early to provide the tanking for the Stone Slammer and for the Inferno Dragons as they push their way through the Queen. The Scatter Shot and some Tessas there. Freezes up the Scatter Shot. But not the queen. The queen's distracted on skeletons, though, so that's fine. They can lock onto her. Also, another thing is the king. It's very important that you get a skeleton spell onto the enemy king so that he's not wandering in circles, making your Inferno Dragon's beams constantly reset. He says in more skeleton spells in the bottom corner, 
to go in there and take for the heroes, but the king does get locked onto. The world champion also is anchored down there by the skeleton spells, and she can't move into the last multi inferno. He's got the free spell for their defense on the top side. Tons of inferno dragons up there, and he's on his, he's on his uh, last approach here to the multi inferno. He has an RC ability. He'll freeze it up and let the inferno dragons charge up and charge through. RC ability can be swagged here along with the queen ability and he's absolutely blown this one out of the water guys we stay almost perfect for unicorns of love all that they've missed this entire semi-finals is one percent and they're gonna keep it rolling here method of madness will strike next love method of madness coming in with some zap lalo gonna zap out Sweepers, the scatter shot, and the expo in the core. That is a starting point here to come with a Sui Lalo. He's got an Electro Dragon they brought in the attack here. Electro Dragon with no Archer Towers down in that area is actually going to get some pretty good value. Do you think it could actually take out that multi Inferno? It'll definitely form the funnel here and push the King and the Queen to go towards the Artillery, but the King might actually stay to the bottom compartment there. The RC going to go in and get the Eagle Artillery down. The the uh, baby dragon down from the bottom corner there, working with that uh, that electro dragon now. Electro dragon's gonna go all the way forward and get one more shot there, almost taking down the enemy grand warden. Not quite though. We'll get the cannon down there. Oh nope, that also doesn't stand. go down. You got the CC engaged. Easily takes that down. He'll pop the king ability as he goes in the single inferno. Make sure that there's plenty of barbarians there to just provide plenty of distraction. He gets through that wall very very fast and he charges all the way through and he takes down. The enemy queen. That is huge right there. Well, she already weakened up by something. She must have been weakened up there by the Electro Dragon Chains or something. I'm not sure. She seemed like she went down super, super fast there. But now look what is left of this base. He's got a minute and a half to come in here with the Lalo. The queen pops her ability. She'll get a couple more trash buttons there, but she won't activate the town hall. The Grand Expo will finish her off. There comes more hounds. More balloons going through a Tassel Farm over in the left-hand top, top corner area side. <laughs> and he'll work his way into the Royal Champion. He's got the Headhunters in there somewhere. There they are. They're on her. They're on her. Grass Skellies are on the Headhunters. They do get her down, though. Looking good. Slammer. I'm at the end here. He's ending on the Town Hall. He's got a Freeze. He's got a Haste. More Teslas on the back side of the base there. Freezes up the Town Hall. Tessas are going to go down. He's collapsing it from all directions. Last defense standing is the Town Hall. Pop the Warden. Pop it early. There it is. If you lose all the balloons, it's okay. It's okay. He's got three to spare. He's got plenty of cleanup. And he's got the triple on the board here. Love from Method of Madness. Getting another one done. The Zap Lalo. So strong. So strong. Lalo is king. Sahara. Is live. Coming in with a drag bat. A little bit of lightning. A little bit of quake. Five bat spells with a bunch of freezes here to complement them. See what they can do. Obviously he wants to set up something with the Royal Champion. But what's he going for? Okay, I see. He's going to go with the Royal Champion right in this compartment here. If he can clear that. And then he can clear the other side over here with an Electro Dragon. That he'll probably want to get started relatively early. What's he doing in that top corner? Some archers working up there. Not entirely sure what he's doing just yet. He's got a blimp, so maybe he's going to come in opposite the town hall and charge the scatter shots first. That wouldn't be a bad idea. An electric dragon can get a lot of value over onto this wizard tower over on the left side. He'll have his heroes going after the eagle artillery. They can form the funnel there. I do like this. He's going to go in with the queen. And a giant to go get the eagle artillery down. He's taking some heavy fire there as the expo did get locked onto her. She'll grab out that arch tower. He sends in the e drag over on the left side. And no, the, I cannot figure out where he was going to come in here. But apparently, the RC is set up to come in the bottom corner. And the dragons are coming in on the left side. With the E-Drag out in the open, the king will clear in the open as well. Working his way through the Tessa farm. Working with that Electro Dragon. He still has his... No, he doesn't have a word ability. He already used it. He'll rage up in the middle, and he'll send in a blimp that needs to go through and take the town hall down. That blimp might be a little bit on the late side. Oh, the headhunters take out the warden! 
freezes up and misses the town hall. Uh oh. So hard making some small mistakes here. He can still pull it up though. The dragons are still okay. They're still okay. He needs to get this air this uh wizard tower down to the bottom here down. Our champion taking out a big chunk of the base there. The bat's coming down onto the last wizard tower and scatter shot. If he gets this oh, he doesn't get it. What's he gonna do about that? What's he gonna do about that? Here comes the bat sweeping around the base here. They're gonna clear out that corner, they're gonna regroup. There's nothing that will threaten them over there. They just need to all approach at the same time. They have to get the one shot onto the air defense. And then he needs to get some kind of tanking. It all comes down to these bats, guys. It's going to determine the whole attack. Does he have... He has in a whiz... Oh, he can't get it inside the moon. He can't get inside the range. Can he still finish it? The dragons are still alive. He's got clean up in the bottom corner. He can get the ground skellies out of the way. He just needs to get through the enemy RC and have the time to make it across the base. But the king was supposed to take out that wizard tower and he did not lose the dragon. Go black mine. I don't think he's going to make it. He's not going to make it. It's time. The dragons might be able to finish off there. They do have good health there as they go through the RC. But they're not going to have enough time to cross the base and get over there and clear out that corner. He had to take out the wizard tower and he doesn't. And it's going to be a defense because of it. If he had anything left to go tank it, even a solo balloon could have done the trick there. There goes another black mine. 95%. And now in the series, Unicorn's Love is down by two. They missed a 99% in the previous war on 95% here. They are in desperate need of a defense here. And Method of Madness hasn't missed yet. Yeah, those five... Five headhunters in the CC is a lot to deal with. They can kill heroes through their ability sometimes. Not the Warden, obviously, but the Warden already used his ability, so he was vulnerable. But here we go. Coffee in with the next one. Coming in with a blimp to go take out the left-hand compartment. Warden walk to clear. How far does he want to go with this Warden walk? Does he want to charge the town hall? Does he want to go all the way into the town hall? I would imagine that he does, right? Look how much those yetis got on the other side there. It would have been nice if they got the uh, ground expo down. They left up both the ground expo and the multi inferno over there. That ground expo would have been a big difference in the attack here. But he'll go right through with super witches. And it looks like if he can get the king to go into the town hall compartment, that would actually work out nice. The warden doesn't need to finish going in there, but the king can go in there and pick up the slack and take the town hall. He's going to start the king to go that direction, starting under the cannon and walk him south. And that should push him over towards the town hall. But the queen is not going in to follow the super witches. She's on her way to the town hall as well. But the jump is going to connect the two. No, the king is staying to the outside as the queen stole his targets and drove him into the base. That could be a potential issue here. He'll rage up the super witches and get him through to get the healers inside the rage. They'll freeze up to protect the queen's health as she takes the town hall. The Queen takes the Town Hall Blast, unfortunately, then goes down. The Queen going down early is going to have a big impact on this attack here. He does have the Royal Champion coming in on the left side. She'll grab out that multi inferno who's already beaten up by the Yetis in the start of the attack there. The King doesn't step into the Eagle Artillery, and he'll continue to take fire from the Artillery Shells there. Royal Champion pops their ability, gets down a handful more defense in the top corner, clearing out everything, and everything is collapsing to the top of the base here. Scatter Shot goes down. All defenses are tanked, and the RC can sweep out the rest of the base, and he has plenty of time to do it. Beautiful attack here from Coffee. I was a little bit worried when the king and the queen didn't go exactly where I expected them to go. But the plan was solid. The funnel was solid. He kept all the super riches together, and he kept the healers on them and raged, and he swept through this base no problem. Plenty of time. To clear it out there. And Method to Madness. Now 7 for 7. And setting themselves up. To take the win. Kamakun. Live against Lons. This is. Starting to build pressure here. As they can't make any more mistakes. They have to hold everything together here. And. Triple out basically the rest of the war here to catch back up with Better Than Madness. It is now up by two stars. Oh. 
Oh my god. You can't see the goblins behind the town hall. I thought he just missed it. But the goblins emerge from behind the town hall. And they take it down. I was a little worried there. I thought he wasn't going to get it. <laughs> okay. Okay. He'll push his way in with a queen charge. To go get the multi inferno. He's got another super ball break and he can drop that and it'll target the storage here. Perfect. Good. They put these extra compartments with one building in them just to force people to use two wall breakers because none of the other walls in the area can be targeted. So those single building compartments mixed with the wall breakers have to go to those. He'll send another one down the line and look at that. He gets it open there. Getting the wall breaker to die in the right spot there. That's another way we can do it. But he had to open up the other compartment. He drops in the king in the right hand corner. No siege bricks. So the hybrid is just going to have to go in without... The extra fun in there from the siege barracks, but the king is going to do a good job there. There's nothing really out there to threaten him. And as long as the queen, the enemy queen goes to the miners and not to his king, his king should be able to stay safe on the outside there and work for a long time, continuously providing funneling power out there as a wizard works behind him. He's got the freeze for the multi inferno. Lots of giant bombs going off in the middle of the base stairs to hog sweep through, but they're still inside of the ward ability. A Tessa, not a Tessa. Yes, a Tesla. A Tesla farm pops over on the left side, and the Hogs are trying to get to it through the tornado trap there, and they do get it down there before the road champions can go pick him off. Where's his road champion? She takes some eagle fire in there. He'll freeze up to protect her, freezes up the enemy road champion, and Kamakun has absolutely crushed this one with the Queen Charge hybrid using the sneaky goblin blimp at the start of the attack there to snipe off the town hall, pull the CC. And the most important part there is that CC pull. You have to make sure that you pull the CC with the blimp so the queen can fight off into safety. That's one of the biggest advantages of it while well, grabbing out a key target. Form the funnel, get the CC pull. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's why there was such a long delay there where the town hall went down. He brought 27 barbarians and six sneaky goblins inside of his blimp. That is hilarious. <laughs> All right, we're live on the other side here. Beige coming in. With the Queen Charge hybrid as well. Now they cannot afford to get tripled again. Unicorns of Love needs to hold strong here. But uh, Beige with an opportunity to really, really put the pressure on the last two attackers. Unicorns of Love. For Unicorns of Love to make a comeback, they'd have to triple their final attacks there. In addition, they would need two out of the remaining three Method of Madness players to fail and come up a little bit short. They're looking at a 6% deficit here in the overall percentage that they would need to have these uh, fail by to be able to make a comeback. But they need two of them. See, so said there were two fails from Unicorns of Love in the series. One from the previous war, one from this war. We'll see what happens here. Is the king going to come in the opposite side here? As the queen does a nice punch in the base there. Her healers are safe. She's looking good. She'll punch into the enemy queen, the enemy king, and the enemy town hall. A couple ground skellies there popping on, but they're going to go to the king. That'll be fine. He has more ground skellies popping on him. A couple giant bombs going up. He'll heal up here, and he will engage all the heroes here before he activates the town hall. So he has to heal early on to the attack there because the town hall will not be activated for a while. Now it activates as the king pops up there, and there's the ward ability protecting everything as they work their way through. Missed the king, though, but did get the peck, I think. The peck is still full health. The king's still at an adequate health there. Frees up the scatter shot, and now he can work his queen through and get to the eagle artillery she broke through the wall queen is smart on this one she's looking good he's into the multi inferno and the scatter shot on the top side of the base he still has to work his way through the left hand quarter though but the queen is going to regroup with everything as they push through he still has an rc ability and if you can use that rc ability to swipe out the tessa farm and push everything to the multi inferno that would be the perfect time to do it right about now perfect That'll push him into the multi-inferno. And he's got the triple on the board here. Beige! Not going to give this Unicorns of Love team a chance to make a comeback just yet. It's another triple. And Method to Madness is now eight out of eight triples for the series. Crazy performance here. But now, Unicorns of Love has to pray 
the method of madness doesn't triple again. They have to hold them to two defenses and Unicorn's Love needs to triple out. Toto has to triple. Running out of opportunities. A fail from either of these Unicorn's players and a triple or a triple from Method of Madness will put the war potentially out of reach here for Unicorns of Love. He catches a tornado trap and finds a big Tessa farm up in the top corner. He can use sneaky goblins to go get the town hall down. He's going to need a test one, though. He's going to need a test one to go in there. Make sure there's no traps that'll kill the sneaky goblins. Not sure what all he put up there to test in that top corner, but there is going to be that big Tessa farm that he's going to have to deal with later in the attack. Here comes the Sneaky Goblins. Okay, Town Hall Snipe, successful. Queen, continuing on in the bottom corner. Now, what do we do to finish off that top corner there? Will we just kind of send the Lalo through it later on? I think he may have already used a couple of blues there. I didn't see what he used at the start there to lure out the Teslas and test the area there. But he's still going to have to deal with all those Tessas up there. And there still might be a lot of air traps in the area. So we'll see. We'll see. He'll gauge the enemy heroes with his queen. Headhunter comes down to help him push through. But the Headhunter is uh, going to be a little bit slower than a rage. So he will rage on top of that. That'll get him engaged onto the enemy world champion. Between the Headhunter and the queen working together, he'll get that down no problem. Sends in a wall breaker, but it doesn't go deep. Why did a wall break right there? He sends in another one. Does it make it? Does it make it? Yes, it does. It makes it to the wall. Here comes the RC to go grab the Multi-Inferno and drive the Queen towards the last Multi-Inferno. She'll grab the CC and the Scattershot. The King get to clear out the top corner and clear out the Tessas up there, at least part of them. Slammer comes in to start out the Lalo. RC on her last breath there. She'll die, but there are two Grand Expos to lock onto the Queen right now. She will be able to escape one of them as she steps away there and rounds the corner. Although making a nice approach there, he'll ward ability and rage as he makes his way through the scatter shot there. More balloons collapsing through the Tesla farm, and then a couple come in late to go into this uh, this single inferno. Other balloons are gonna go to it anyways. 48 seconds to go, and the war is on the line. Toto, come on, carry all the way through here. He's got two invisibility spells. Might want to save his queen right here, but he has a queen ability as well. That'll save him time. On top of that, sends in a minion to go snipe off this cannon. And he's got 30 seconds left to clean up, guys. He's looking good here. He's got a couple of minions onto the CC. He's got four swag spells here. And he can find somewhere to drop them all down there. But making sure that he doesn't make any of the remaining buildings there invisible. There it is. Swag. A line across the base. And that could start a comeback here for Unicorns of Love to swing this war back. But they're going to need a defense. They're desperately going to need a defense. All right, guys. With an opportunity to close out the war right now. Lons coming in with the Inferno Dragons. If he does triple this, I guess there's still a small glimmer of hope there. If there's a one star in the final attack there from Myth of Demandus. But we'll see if he can get the triple here. As he starts in with a little bit of lightning to take out everything on the top side of the town hall there. Electro Dragon to go clear out the top corner. And you can see where he's setting up for the Inferno Dragons to enter right here with the King and the Queen there to join up with the Inferno Dragon. Or with the E-Dragon, I mean. E-Dragon, that's what I meant to say. And if that E-Dragon can actually survive from the Ice Golem freezing up the uh, the air defense. Oh, the Queen got it. The Queen got it under control there. Looking good here to start. He's got a blimp that can travel through and take the Town Hall down. Word ability early as Skeleton Spells are... Going to have a nice, easy spot to know where they need to drop there. But there is a multi inferno in the middle. He'll drop in the freeze to lock the multi down. The queen taking some fire there from the expo. Some skeletons will pass her up if she engages the enemy king. That'll be good. There's those skeletons to lock the enemy king into place there. So the uh, inferno dragons can actually lock onto him. He's got sneaky goblins that took the town hall down. Warden is at very, very low health there. And the Inferno Dragons over on the right side are falling a little bit short. Can they make it through? And the Queen's still working a big Tessa farm at the end of the pathing here. Inferno Dragons. He's out of skeleton spells. The heroes are vulnerable. There's the RC ability. King's tanking. King's tanking. One more Inferno Dragon left. King goes down. RC is on her own out there. It's the Queen's getting stuck in the trash. No ability. Oh, my God. 
Is this it? Is this the defense? I think it is. I think it is. Oh my god! It's a defense! The first miss from Method of Madness when they needed it the most! And Unicorns of Love has a chance to come back! Unless this queen can somehow make it through. She cannot. She already used her ability. She's gonna go down. Oh my. It is time. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying. 92%. Unicorns of Love now holds a percentage advantage. They have to triple their final attack. And then they have to hold a defense against Method to Madness. Any percentage will do. Even a 99%. Let's go. Let's go. Final attack. 92% will be the final. Guys, it all comes down. The entire series comes down to this next attack. And I'm disconnecting. <laughs> um, You want to, like, connect or something, iPad? That would be very helpful right now. Like, right now? Lucky that was a fast attack there, and... Are you kidding, iPad? Are you kidding? Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me, iPad. There we go. All right, guys. We had some technical difficulties. So we're showing these attacks on replay, but I did not look at the result here. And we're off. Unicorns of Love has to triple, and then they have to get a defense to be able to pull this war back. At this point, they could win the individual war, but to win the series, they have to triple and they have to get a defense coming in with a quake and some lightning to take out the queen. You send in his RC that uh, Inferno's already weakened up there. Pop the ability nice and early, take it down. Archer's working up on the top side of the base there, forming out a funnel up there. Baby Dragon helps him get through to form the funnel. Get a uh, Grass Skellies out of the way. He gets a CC pull here off of his Royal Champion. Does he get the full pull? I see a lot of Headhunters here. Lots and lots of Headhunters. Poison up, poison up. Ah, oh, watch your Queen. A Valkyrie here would be crazy useful, but the Queen has to go to ability right away. He'll wall break his king in, but he's already lost a lot of the health here on the queen. Luckily, she gets the ground expo off of her. The king will have his ability to carry him through the enemy king. And he'll still have to get this uh, multi-inferno down in the middle. That potentially will be an issue. It's just kind of in a weird spot right now where there's no path to it except for from the town hall. So he obviously wants to start at the town hall. He's not at 50% yet, so he's going to have to collect that percentage. But the testes that are popping over there will help him get that percentage. His queen almost getting out one more defense before she goes down. And here comes the soul slammer. Now, I did say that that multi inferno is in an awkward spot. And the slammer will make up for the awkwardness and take it down. And I'll also clear out any red bombs that are in the area. He'll pop the uh, ward ability again through the town hall. All of his deploys are deployed now as he has more coming to the top corner. They'll work way into the Archer Tower up there. He's got the haste as he shoots through to the scatter shot. The scatter shot has to go down. If that scatter shot goes down, there's the ice golem, ice hound, I mean, freezing up and the slammer working his way in. He opens it up to hit the haste. And he's looking good as long as he doesn't time fail. Don't time fail. He's got 40 seconds. He's got plenty of time. Guys, Unicorns of Love have done it. They went perfect all the way through to the end here. And now it comes down to the final attacker from Method to Madness. If they triple, they win. If they get anything less than a triple, they're all done. Here we go. All right. This is it. This is for the war. If they triple this attack, Method of Madness goes on to the Grand Finals. Anything less than a triple will send Unicorns of Love 
to the grand finals instead. Here we go, guys. Coming in with an ice golem. With the royal champion. Quakes out the town hall. He's got an invisibility spell. That will actually save him from the ground skellies. But he gets pulled outside of it by the tornado trap. They still get it. Freezes it up. Freezes it up. Okay, okay. You have any more invisibility? Doesn't. Oh my OP tornado trap drags the royal champion outside of the invisibility spell and gets her killed. Can he make up for that? Can he pull that back? The queen and the king will work their way into the multi inferno. The queen and the eagle artillery. But if he can't find a solution to deal with the last strikes on the town hall efficiently, then he's in a lot of trouble here. And this attack, if it doesn't triple, then Unicorn's Love is going to a grand finals. And the Queen ignoring the multi-inferno. What is happening on this attack, guys? What is happening? Is this a comeback for Unicorn's Love? Here comes the Slammer. Slammer is going to carry through. It'll take the town hall down. One shot. Multi-Inferno. Engaging the balloons here. Doesn't have any way to deal with it. He wants to hold on to the freeze, apparently. He's going to coast through it. He wants, actually, the Slammer to go to the to the scatter shot here. But if this is going to open up, the dragon comes out. The dragon will continue taking the scatter shot. But this is not looking too great for him. As he still has another scatter shot to deal with. And he still has a multi-inferno. Was this a comeback? <laughs> I don't know that he has it. I don't think he has it. The blues are all going down to the scatter. Unicorns of love. What a comeback here. Method of madness. Goes eight out of eight triples. And then falls in the final hour. And Unicorns of Love is moving on to the Grand Finals match. Wow. <laughs> I cannot believe that that war just swung back. That is crazy. Crazy, crazy. Sorry about the technical difficulties there and had to play those on replay. My internet just kind of crapped out on me there. But guys, if you're watching this later on YouTube, thank you so much for coming and joining us here. Cheering on the teams. But if you're uh, watching this the day of this video release, then you can still catch the next round of the semifinals right here on Twitch. That round is going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern on the day that this video releases. So come join us for the other semifinals match and we'll see which other team is gonna go to the grand finals. MCS versus Affiliate Esports. Affiliate Esports took down Nisheng Dance on the round before. MCS took down Tribe Gaming and before that, they took out the Queen Walker. So this is gonna be an epic match and we can't wait to set up for this grand finals match and find out which team will become the Clash Champs Cup champion. But don't forget, guys, we just formed a membership with Blueprint Base Building over at BlueprintCLC.com where you can order custom built bases from your favorite pro players, whether from Alter Attacks to Queen Walkers, MCS, Space Station Gaming, Vatang, Tribe Gaming. Take your pick of any pro team and they probably have a builder there. They can build you custom bases and you make sure you get those defenses in your next war. But guys, if you also don't want a uh, quite as exclusive base as they would build for the custom bases over there. You can also join right down here and then twice per month we're going to post up a base between Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 13 and we're going to post it on the members only community tab and you have to be a member at least a minimum member to be able to see that so definitely think about getting a membership but guys this is going to wrap it up for today thank you so much for coming out and watching supporting the teams and then join us back for the next semifinals. Take it easy, guys. I'll see you in the next one.